Bootstrap is the most popular library used to develop web applications. It contains many components ready to use and there are also specific versions to use with React and Vue.js. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of these practical components from Bootstrap and in case you're familiar with SaaS, you can also change and modify all those components, styles, colors, sizes, borders and everything just by changing the variables that are already being used by those components. You can find all of them in the documentation. So let's get started. The first one is the carousel. The carousel is typically used for the first section of a web page where you can see huge images that just slide from one side to the other. You can go back or go forward and you see different images can contain text, can contain titles and captions, whatever the, the you want to put in there. So for you to understand how this carousel is actually built behind the scenes, imagine a children's carousel. Imagine that this carousel has a single line of horses. Now replace those horses by images and put it to run. This is more or less how the carousel is built behind the scenes for the web application. But instead of the horses, we have the images and we can only see one horse or one image at a time. We cannot see the whole carousel if we do, at least if you don't inspect the DOM, you, if, otherwise you could see the, the carousel running um, in the DOM and each of the slide uh, going to the left and then the, the next one coming in front of you and leaving. And if you inspect the DOM using a developer tools or something, you can actually see that in practice. Otherwise, you cannot see, you only see one horse or one image. You can actually insert more than one single image per slide or per horse. The horse can hold multiple images if you want. And that single slide is going to have any content that you want. If you want more images, you can create maybe a grid with two columns, two rows, and each slide is going to have uh, the same structure or not. You can even create different structures for each slide. However, if you're looking for more complex behaviors or constructions, such as swiping in a mobile phone to the left or to the right to change slides, or to have two different uh, carousels linked to each other. These kind of things are more complex and for that I can only recommend to use a separate library just for this. For instance, Leak Slide is one of the most used and it has many different options to how you want to structure one or two more slides that are connected to each other. The second one is the nav bar or navigation bar. This is the most typical component used as a menu or for navigation through the web page. I hope you don't feel seasick because you surf in the internet and you navigate through the web page. <laughs> okay, whatever. Each of those links that you put in your navigation bar can lead to a new page, to a different page, or it can lead to a different section from the same page. If it's a longer one pager, it can just slide down, make the user slide down to the right section of the page. It's also possible to choose up which screen size do you want to have it um, expanded, so with all the links shown, or if you wanted to have it collapsed, so with the typical a tree bars icon that it's called a hamburger icon. Another one is the moto. No, here we are not talking about the semi synthetic fabric made from beastry pulp or the artificial silk or I, I'm not even sure what that looks like but we are not talking about that here. The moto is actually a smaller window that pops up in front of you in the screen and leaves all the page contents in the background. This model shows up in the screen after the user performs a certain action and triggers this event. The bootstraps model comes already with a header, a content area and a footer and also with a close button. And you can just remove any of those parts or you can put the, the close button instead of the header and the footer. You can use the footer to put some buttons to call to an action. You can resize it. You can change the position to show in the middle of the screen, on the top, on the bottom, on the left, on the right, whatever you want. And of course, you can also use the grid system inside the model itself. So you can define the position of your elements just by using a certain number of columns or rows. Okay, the accordion. 
The accordion is a component composed of vertically organized items that can expand and collapse once the title is clipped. It resembles the musical instrument, the accordion itself, a little bit, which contains those stacked bellows one after the other and that can be expanded and collapsed as the musician plays. This component can be pretty useful for instance to create compact uh, blocks of information like FAQs for instance. Buttons. Buttons are everywhere. Anything you click to perform any kind of action in the web is a button. However, the default HTML button, once you insert this element in a page without bootstrap, the default one, is pretty old school. It's very old style and it can be pretty different from um, browser to browser. It's kind of, there's a default style for each browser. So by using those bootstrap buttons, you actually save a lot of time. You don't have to worry so much about making all the styles for different states of the button. For instance, when it's being hovered by the mouse or when it's clicked, you can see that the bootstrap button already has that effect that it looks like it's being pressed. Of course, if you want something very specific, some more animations um, that comes out of the button, bubbles that comes out of the button, like the button I have in my page, then you actually have to go a little bit further and create animation yourself through the frame, the frame steps and say what you want to happen in each frame, st frame step. Drop downs are also very easy to be implemented using Bootstrap. You can transform any groups of links or lists into a drop down very easily just by adding um, a class drop down into a div that is wrapping around every single element that you want inside that drop down. You can also insert dividers, you can add forms, elements, you can add buttons, you can add search fields, check boxes, you can put anything you want inside a drop down. You can also define actually if you want it to be a drop down, if you want it to be a drop up, if you want it to be a drop left, drop right, you can choose that. You can put some offset between the bottom and the, the section of this drop whatever <laughs> that you want I'm eating for I'm eating a lot of fur you? his fault it's also possible to define if you want that drop down to close once the user clicks inside in one of the links or if you want only if the to close it only if the user clicks outside or both or none so maybe you want to force the user to close it at the same place that they open, so in the same in the bottom itself. The cards. If you ever played a card game, you know exactly how it looks like. Yeah. The card is typically composed by an image, a title, a heading, and some text. However, it can actually be any type of content. It nothing. It's nothing more than just a piece of content inside a little box that it's already structured for you. You can also define its width because it, by default it takes always 100% of the size of its parent. To define this width, you just have to say, for instance, using the grid system, you can say how many columns you want that, that card to have. And you can position them one next to the other. So it's just a way to already give you a responsive way to structure your components and make them um, easily aligned. The alerts are nothing more than a bar that appears in the middle of the screen um, on, or on the bottom, on the top, on the, uh, you can position differently. It contains a message that informs the user of what's going on. So, for instance, uh, they press the button to send something and then they, saw, they see that alert, the green alert saying yay, your message has been sent or not, maybe something went wrong and then you make that alert red and says yeah, there was an error, try again later or just give up, I don't know. You can just write whatever you want there, you can add icons in, the, in this bar and you can make it even fade automatically by adding the fade class into this component. So you don't have to create uh, using CSS the fading 
um, animation, so to say. Once the person closes that alert, it's going to be removed from the DOM. So it's important to remember that so you don't try to manipulate it while it's not being uh, shown on the screen. Because if you try to manipulate with JavaScript, you just you won't be able to. Remember, if you remember the, the other video that I made about the DOM, uh, you cannot manipulate objects that are not in the DOM with JavaScript. The off canvas is actually something pretty new in Bootstrap. The off canvas component is um, like a sidebar that can appear from every side of the screen, from the left, the right, the top or the bottom. And it can be used, for example, um, for shopping carts or for special contents, for a notification, message center. It's more or less on your desktop. When you click on your date and time and you see from your operating system from in Windows or from Mac, it doesn't matter, it opens to the side of the screen, uh, the weather, the timing, the latest news, stuff like this. It's the same principle. That's the off canvas. Spinners. Beyblades are amazing spinners. Okay, enough with the stupid jokes. I'm, I'm sorry, it's just, I couldn't resist. Uh, good times, right? Beyblades? Whatever. Okay, so these little guys, those spinners, are actually essential to increase the user experience in your page. It lets the, the user know what's going on behind the scenes. If it's, uh, if the screen may be just frozen, the browser crashed or whatever, nothing is going to be shown, right? That's your first impression. If you only see a blank screen, you're going to think, yeah, that's it, refresh, try again, or close and start again. However, if you have that spinner in your page, you are informing your user that the page is actually being loaded and they please have to wait a little bit. That's a great way to increase the user experience and also give something for the person to look at while they cannot see anything. So you can also create different shapes and sizes of spinners, but the ones from Bootstrap, they offer two different designs. It can be either a spinner, or like a pulsing a light, and you can also add those spinners even to buttons, for instance, like a sending, a sending button after the form. If they press send, my message you can then change to the spinner to say that it's being sent and yeah you create a more interactive experience now toasts what can i say about toast toasts are delicious with pudding, with butter with avocado with cream cheese it doesn't matter what you put on top of it so it doesn't matter what you put on top of your toast is going to be delicious oh no does not we shouldn't be talking about that right that's not what we are talking about, toasts. So toasts are very interesting and very useful. You can use toasts um, to inform the user of something new that is happening in the application while they are already there. For instance, you have uh, a component that allows to add friends and one of the friends just came online. Poof! Then you show a toast saying that the person is online. Or maybe they have a, a shopping cart and one of the items are not is not available anymore then you show a toast this toast doesn't taste that good right but then you inform the user not available anymore you can just um, let your imagination flow and dream about what you can do with toasts just like the real toast just put whatever you want just create the most amazing things that's the same idea However, a difference between the real-life toast uh, with cream cheese and the toast in the page is that the toast from Bootstrap and in your page is going to... you can define it to disappear after a while or after the user has done something. And the toast in real life won't disappear after a while, only if it has been eaten or... yeah, disintegrated. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for today. These are some of the cool components that I thought was going to be worthy to talk about. However, there are many other components and there are many other ways to personalize them that it's uh, I, I didn't go through all of it at the moment uh, right now in this video, but I can really recommend you to go check it out the documentation. This is something that you should get used to. Every single 
programmer or developer, they always have the documentation open in a, the next tab or in another browser or in another window or monitor. We use that a lot. So just try to do this more often so you get more used to it and you don't be so afraid of documentations. I was, when I was just starting, I was kind of afraid of documentations. I thought that they were going to be so complex that I would need so much time to read through it all that, you know, I just, I didn't know. <laughs> I just didn't know. So just open the web page is the documentation. It's nothing like um, how the code behind the things looks like. The documentation teaches you how you can use it. Okay, so just go ahead, check the web page, look for other components that you're interested in, and try to find in the documentation a way to personalize that I didn't talk about, and try it yourself so you can just get more familiar with using documentation. Okay, so that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I see you in the next one. Bye.